Eddie Piper, the uh, point guard, basically, he was the, the uh, he, they were all heavy contributors, but he was the guy that you would put on the other team's toughest player, and he was tough as nails, and he was a very good player. Uh, in fact, in the, the semifinal game, uh, he hit a, a bank shot that uh, put us up by one, and it was a tremendous shot. It was one of those kind you love to have because he takes it, as he takes it, the buzzer goes off, and it went in. The other team didn't even have a chance. And it was the other opposing coach's last game because he was moving on to coach uh, the Knicks. And he left Little Lewis. And his famous quote to the newspapers was, we could beat Mount St. Mary's nine times out of ten. He said, this happened to be the tenth one. He said, because they beat us. Dick Cowley was the butt of Captain Dick, as they call him, a great jump shooter. He was, he's Dick's, uh, say he called himself 6'4", 5", but he was good size, good rebounder, and a streak shooter, but a, an excellent shooter, uh, particularly when he was open. He, he, if he had a fight to get open, it was more of a problem, but he was a terrific shooter in big games. He made a lot of tough shots, and uh, if he was open, O'Reilly would get him the ball, and he would give him hell if he missed it. <laughs> Missed the shot that he gave him the ball. Uh, the the only one that O'Reilly didn't really pick on was Pfeiffer because Pfeiffer was so tough and good in his own right that uh, John never never really got after Eddie because Eddie would tell him off. And, uh, Dave Maloney was another great shooter. He was a great outside shooter. In fact, he got 48 one night uh, his senior year after O'Reilly got hurt. O'Reilly wasn't there. He got a 48 against the American U, I think it was, and he was a terrific shooter. And he was another transfer from uh, Maryland, and but he was from Philadelphia. He played for a teammate of mine. He played at Father Judge High School, and his coach had played with me at LaSalle. He was a very good player, and of course he had alternating centers. Dave Samuels. Dave was a really solid player. I mean, he'd rebound against guys bigger than he was and rebound strong. And he was sneaky scorer, short inside stuff, not much outside, but short inside. But uh, he was very good. The backups coming off the bench, even though they didn't get much time, as you can see, we played four overtimes with no subs. That meant it was, what, 60 minutes each for four or five minute periods in the, in the whole game. And in that game, uh, everything tightened up on Pfeiffer after the game. He, they had to carry him off. He couldn't move. Uh, his muscles, everything was just cramped up on him. So the trainer said, uh, get him a couple of beers. <laughs> oh, he's, he said, oh, no, <laughs> please do. <laughs> so he, he was fine. The next night he was, he was terrific against uh, Hofstra. That was in the regionals. Not real Dick Saylor, because he was a starter. Eddie Folk was a freshman sub. They were both from the Allentown Bethlehem area, which kind of, uh, Eddie was from Whitehall High School and, and Dick was from, from, I forget from, uh, I forget the name of the town where he was from, but it wasn't the same school. But both of them, uh, Eddie Folk was a big burly 6'5", about 225, 230. He was an excellent pitcher. He was a, a, like a real prospect, but uh, he came back. Uh, a year or so later, he finished, and he was a decent player, but he was one of those people that uh, had a straight, he had a low metabolism, and I finally told the players before the game, slap him in the face, wake him up, and get him moving, and uh, they used to do it, and you know, he, he, he laughed, he said, oh, don't do that, and they, come on, it's to wake you up, and he just could, it was great for a pitcher, because, you know, he'd never get excited in a game, and it's good for him as a Foul shooter walking up there, you know he wasn't going to be he wasn't going to be uptight, but you'd like a little life out of your players, and he he had trouble getting started sometimes. And he was he was not what you call fiery. He just couldn't get himself heated up. But he was a decent player. He really was. No, because he was a freshman, and and, and Dave Samuels always thought he should have been playing anyway, because he, even despite the fact he was only six three, the other guy was six nine. The, the problem was. Defensively, it's like when you put a 6'3 on a 6'7 or 6'8, 
six foot seven or eight thinks he's better than the other guy. And sometimes just thinking it, he plays better and he's sure of himself. Whereas playing against six nine, I still remember my college coach used to say that. He said, you just need the six nines and six tens to look the other guy in the eye so that he, you, he knows that he's not going to dominate you. Whereas if he's six foot nine or ten and your guy is six foot three, he's going to think, I could beat this guy. And sometimes just thinking that he will. But uh, with Dave Samuels, he was tough enough and strong enough that we survived with him as our, as our center. Anybody who put him was a better scorer than Dick, even though Dick Saylor, he was uh, he was six foot nine or ten, and he could defend better than six foot three and rebound against the big time, like against uh, John Thompson and Jim Hadnot. I mean, we were a lot better with him than with Dave Samuels because because of the size difference.